Moodle gives you a few ways to back up your online courses. Firstly, through the eyes of a site administrator, uh, you're logged in via the, the front page, you go to the site administration block and the courses menu and then backups. These, uh, these site-wide backups can be configured uh, to run automatically you know, on a nightly or a weekly basis. Uh, however you like, you can choose to uh, include uh, any or all modules and users and logs, files and grades and so forth. Um, you choose how many versions you want to uh, retain. If you only keep one version each time you back up, naturally the, uh, the older version will be uh, overwritten. Um, you need to schedule the backups. In fact, check the box to set them as active. If they're not uh, automated site-wide course backups aren't activated by default, then choose the day uh, or days uh, you wish to run the automated backups and the time. Okay. By default, these get written into the backup data directory located in each course. I'll show you where that is. Um, and the, the automated backups will only run for active courses. Hidden courses aren't included in backups because it's uh, presumed nothing has changed uh, since the course was made inactive. So look, if we go into an active course and we'll presume that the cron job has been uh, configured and is executing and that will mean these automated site-wide backups can also run. If we go into the files area for any given active course, the backup data directory as we said will have the backup situated in it and it's date and time stamped there. You can see it's a zip file. Okay, um, We could uh, restore this at any point in time. It's a fairly sensical thing that uh, educators want to do. You know, at the end of a term or a semester or an academic or calendar year, uh, you want to clone a course uh, and perhaps strip away the user. So you can run a similar course next year with the teacher contribution still intact, but you want to strip away your existing users. Okay, so this backup again was already already done. Um, we get an option here, we can restore to a current course or an existing course adding or deleting data first. Then this course, uh, in this case, let's say we want to restore this backup um, to a new course. So it's going to be a clone or a copy of the existing one. And without user data, uh, however, we will include all the activities and the resources. Strip away the users. And we'll keep everything else there. Okay, so we would continue that. Let's restore this backup. So we're essentially cloning or copying the existing course, but stripping away the users and their data uh, for the next cohort. So that restore has been done, and that's a clone of the original course. Now, another way to go, uh, typically uh, educators might want to come in periodically from time to time and not rely on the automated backups that may or may not be occurring uh, system-wide. Uh, you can, as an editing teacher, run a backup of a course at any point in time. You come in to the course administration block and you click the backup function. Like so. Okay, we again we can select all or none of the activities, the resources and the user data and continue. So just click through this wizard, continue again and we have successfully completed a manual backup. Continue. All right, so the backup uh, file resides in the backup data directory of the given course. What we then can do is download and save this file locally. So that means off-site or offline on a disk away from the Moodle server. Um, it's a clever thing to do, I guess, for data security and uh, you know, disaster recovery purposes. It's never a bad idea to have a, a backup. So we've done that. You could then, in fact, if you wanted to free up a little bit of your storage space with your host or on your server, you would then be able to uh, or, you know, potentially delete the backup that you've got stored online. Like so.